And now joining us with more on the IDF soldier who's just been sentenced to a month, a month in prison, please welcome Israeli news anchor and journalist Lital Shemesh. Thanks Hi. so much for joining us. Good now, evening. as someone who did her military service in the Border Patrol, you understand the sensitivity of the situations and, and the tensions that this specific soldier went through. What, what can you tell us? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, you're right. I mean, I, I was serving uh, as a combat soldier actually for three years, still doing my reserve service uh, in, the, in the IDF. I think we have to understand the, the situation, the situation is at the moment is that you have a terror organization controlling the Gaza Strip, uh, um, telling, ordering their people to go out uh, day in, day out, protesting, rioting on the fence. Uh, Israel is in a risky situation where it cannot allow terrorists to enter the fence. And we have to understand these people are not uh, uh, peace-wanting uh, people who are demonstrating for peace. They don't want to cross the border to have coffee with, uh, with the citizens of Israel, with the citizens of the kibbutzim. Uh, they want to cross the border to uh, create more terror attacks, to butcher Israelis, um, to murder Jews, that's their pure cause. So we, you have to understand that we need to do everything we can to not let those people cross the border. But, but speaking a little bit of the chain of command and kind of the, uh, uh, the operational protocols, what, is, what needs to happen for a Border Patrol soldier to open fire on, uh, on a potential terrorist who's crossing? Well, from the from the uh, the news item that I've read, that terrorist was was trying to cross the border, was trying to uh, climb the fence. Um, that's enough to risk uh, to risk the soldiers' lives, to risk the, citizen, the uh, Israeli citizens' lives. But they can't fire um, on their own. They need to get approval, correct? So in a way, I mean, you need to use your sense of um, judgment. Judgment, exactly. It's it's un, uh, in my eyes, it's it's absurd that every time. Uh, a soldier wants to shoot. He will start calling his commander and start asking for permission to shoot back, to shoot back, or to uh, defend his own life. I mean, uh, you, we're in a risky situation. We have a terror entity controlling the Gaza Strip, uh, uh, a terror entity that's shooting rockets for years now towards Israeli civilians, thousands of rockets a year, and you need to take that into consideration. I mean, it obviously, this kind of brings up the whole Elor Azaria case, mm -hmm. because that was all over the news. People were extremely upset, you know, um, at, at, at how his case turned out. You having served in the military, have you ever had an experience that is similar to this? I think, first of all, it's not as a Elor Azaria case, because in Elor Azaria's case, uh, he shot someone who was already on the ground. And here, there was a terrorist trying to climb on the fence right. and cross sure. the border, so it's a different uh, situation. But I can tell you from my experience as a, a, a woman who served in combat, by the way, the IDF was the first military to uh, integrate women into combat uh, positions, uh, you saw again and again how terrorists were using women, children, disabled people, uh, using uh, women, pregnant women uh, um, in ambulances, trying to smuggle weapons, trying to smuggle uh, explosives. I was uh, serving during the Second Intifada twice a week. We had explosive devices, uh, uh, suicide bombers exploding in Tel Aviv. So we saw that those situations happening again and again. Um, and, and yes, as a soldier, you need to use your judgment, as, as you said, Natasha, at every single moment because it can cost innocent civilians' lives. So, I mean, how, how, what should the IDF be doing to ensure that soldiers are following protocol but, you know, are also reacting, I guess, in the right way mm -hmm. when they're in situations of tension and, and so stress you know, like So, you know, as a soldier, and you were talking about Elor Azaria, you know that when you're misbehaving, you'll be sentenced, you'll be judged. You know that you have a specific rules you need to follow, uh, a specific rules of engagement uh, that you need to follow. Actually, the first thing that you're getting when you're um, wearing your uniform and joining, drafting to the IDF is this little booklet of the, the moral code of the IDF. So that's the first thing you're getting even before you're getting your uniform. Um, you, know, you know that uh, uh, the IDF have specific rules, uh, rules of engagement. Um, we don't shoot civilians. We, we're trying not to harm innocent civilians, trying not to cause casualties, but just to uh, target, pinpoint targeting uh, the terrorists. Well, you know, I think that there were obviously a lot of locals who were very upset about this sentencing because since every, you know, <laughs> Israeli has well, to go they want into a the army. Response well, and mm -hmm. they want the soldiers yeah. to be able to Yeah, but to the respond. other side of this is that from an international standpoint to see the fact that, you know, the fact that the Israeli army mm -hmm. is actually implementing uh, punishment, you know, and saying, 
you can't just do what you want basically Absolutely. shows a morality mm -hmm. exactly. of, of this institution. So exactly. thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you.